hey, we are going to feed only women. In this hunger time, it's just, I don't know how, all men who dress like women and go and collect the food because we're hungry. Uh-huh. We will even have to dress Bob Risky. He will, will be, he wouldn't even know where the, what is in dressing like a woman. It's not easy. The wigs are sold in the market and everything. Everybody will turn into, so this. In the time of poverty like this, the economic principle of Yusuf is what everybody should apply in his own lives. It needs to save more. You don't know what is happening. Kese kese la ani lowo a makasakasa timbo. A dollar was just eight hundred naira or there about a couple of months ago. Now a dollar is over a thousand naira. How much will it go? Nobody knows. Oh, sorry, don't say falafulu. Ogba salary, salary ukilawa. Eh, ibera ga week. All bera the Sunday light. Eat little and save more. Aye, eat and get chicken. Call our wayima. Aye, shawama koma. Aye, ice cream. Muko mugari. Jack Mama, but Ben can't drop to Zabu Koni. You see that value? Kilo can you see that value? Kilo you see? Jack Mama, Mugari, Orieja. Jack Mama, Mugari, Orieja. See, I told you, right? The guy, the guy was blazing yesterday while we were on Mayogu's diary political. Okay, he was blazing on a rise. And he actually makes a lot of sense too. Imagine that analysis. Over 300,000 uh, barrels of crude oil is still being stolen in Nigeria every day. And he did the math and he said that's like uh, over 20 million uh, dollars, 20 point something million dollars in a month. That's going to run into a, three, I mean, a trillion naira. He said they would rather send the EFCC, send all the security apparatuses to go after those who are stealing that crude oil and keep it with Nigeria done to be going after those who are spending or spraying money. Because this situation in Nigeria right now eh, is so tough that you can't say, oh, we are feeding women tomorrow, only women. You'll be surprised that you will see bearded women that will be there with their wigs and all of that. All of us could dress like women. Okay. Uh, ask uh, Celia. Celia is uh, somebody who can fit into character very well, right? But what am I dressed like women right now? I'm a lot Jerais. That's the situation of Nigeria. So it is not about somebody dressing like a woman. I love that. But somebody now said, oh, much on Tinkamu. Hey. To survive in Nigeria right now, it's tough for man or men. Let's be honest, it's tough for women too. But there are those, somebody said, maybe that's what uh, Idris did. Bob Risky. He don't, ah, the guy don't observe, observe. Oh my God, tough for oh, me, man, in this place. He quickly just decided to be a woman. Started dressing and cross dressing that way. And that is what brought him to where he has gotten to today. And they will say, well, it's because so. And if you are not surprised, though, there are some recent scourge increase in that, that there are so many, many men who are now turning to women in Nigeria now. It will tell you that they are not, they are not uh, gay or they are not. They are just cross-dressers. Because everybody will survive. So I don't know, like, I don't know how women are feeling about that because it's making, it's giving the vibe that, once you are a woman, it's going to be easy. And it's not. It is not. You know? But some people were like, kind of like, ah, oh, more, that's smart. Oh. Uh, that could actually be what it is, Tito. But it doesn't matter. Then they pressed him on that Soludo people. Soludo people said, all oh, this your noise. Soludo's two years is better than your eight years as governor of Anambra states. And he said, well, I promised the Anambra State people education, infrastructure, security. I delivered. Soludombu promised them about, I mean, sorry, Dubai, Japan. He should deliver Dubai, Japan, and not really worry about 
himself for not turning Anambra to Japan because he didn't promise Anambra people that he would turn Anambra to Dubai, Japan. Listen to this. Ludo has achieved more than. I wanted to correct that part. You see, that was Andy Uba, not Ifani Uba. Okay. And I remember in 2021, when the now defunct Heritage Bank, when the staff of uh, that uh, bank, they had to stage a protest in front of the senator to pay them the money he took. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today is Monday, the 21st day of June, 2021. And then we'll have here the staff of Heritage Bank, PLC Abuja, who are in front of um, Senator Andrew Barth's house in Abuja. Senator Andrew Barth has been owing the bank for a couple of years now. And um, we are here for a peaceful meeting with him, very peaceful meeting, to ask him to kindly repay those loans because those are depositors' funds. And um, those monies, if they are not repaid, we throw the number of people you see here with their families out of work. And we know the situation of um, the economy in town. So if this number of people are thrown out of work, you know what it means. So we're here to appeal to him, to the distinguished senator, to kindly pay this money so that um, these people will not lose their job. And of course, the bank becomes a going concern. Today, three years after that protest, all of these people have lost their jobs now and more. Okay? And the bank is now defunct. There is no heritage bank anymore. There are four more banks that will go under before December if they don't find investors that's going to buy their bad debts. Heritage bank drowned because of 590 billion era exposure. Exposure means debt that people didn't pay back. And the bank didn't have any means of covering it until it drowned it. And everybody working in that bank, those who have not jackpot, are now looking for work. There is conversation around some of these four banks eh, that will likely go under. If uh, they don't find people that will buy their bad debt. One of them is almost close to that heritage debt, over 400 billion. I won't mention the name so that it won't be like, I don't, I mean, I don't, I, I've already created, I mean, created panic or something. So there's no point. There are some of them that are going to get, uh, that are going through aggressive takeover now. They will force them to sell the bank as a scrap. While Tiknumbu, we write up the debt for whoever is buying the bank. Let me tell you what that means. Let's say this heritage bank now. Eh? There is a, a deposit, sorry, uh, NDIC, the National Deposits Insurance uh, Corporation, Abi. Is it corporation or commission? Corporation. Now, they, then there is another one called Amcon. Okay. That Amcon is to recover debt. For example, now, if a bank is going bankrupt, okay, so before they go bankrupt, they can talk to Amcom to go and help them recover the, the bank loan from their customers, okay? Then uh, if that fail and the bank liquidates, so the next uh, corporation that will take it over is called the NDIC, National or Nigeria, uh, deposit or depositors insurance uh, corporation. I don't know, like something like that. So those ones are now the ones who are now going to deal with dissolve. I mean, dissolving the bank. Okay, they will value the properties of the bank, the ones that is owned by the bank. They will value how much money the banks still have left. They will take a look at how much is the depositors' money. All of you who have deposit there, how much and how you know. So once they clear all of that, which can take them months. Now they will begin, they are now the ones that will now begin to sell the properties of the bank. And in most cases, they don't always have the money to clear. And they always tell Nigerians to go and lick their wounds. That's what usually happens. But you know what they do with the banks in Nigeria? 
before Heritage Bank will go down, okay, um, normally they will look for investors. So the investors that will, help, that will bring in investments, like they are in debt of 590 billion, right? So somebody like me can just say, I have, let's say I have um, $1 billion. So $1 billion will give me in Nigeria, maybe 1.4, 1.5 trillion Naira. So then I can now say, I want to go and sort of uh, renegotiate the debt, see how much of it we can get back. But pending that time, I will put that 590 billion back in that bank. So instead of the bank being held by a lot of people, I will, the bank will now be holding me. And that will be issued to me as my shares. The rest of the money I'm bringing in as well can be used to upgrade the bank, hire more staffs, expand operation, and see how to make more money in a short period. That is an investor part. You see the part where the fraud and the corruption and aggressive takeover is taking place or it's going to take place in Nigeria. Eh? Yeah, I'm con. can get back the debt from the politicians. There is no investor to buy the debt. So, if Numbuani is gang, we now sort of, to save, for example, to save the heritage now, right? They will say, we will buy the heritage bank for 300 billion. Meanwhile, Heritage Bank may be worth, even the leftover, without the debt to, they may be worth, let's say, $1 trillion or $1.5 trillion in assets and everything. So to buy them as crap, since there's no investor, the likes of Tiknumbu and Gang, they will send someone. First, they will undervalue the entire bank, okay? Because of that debt, they will undervalue it. Now, you see that debt, Tiknumbu and his gang, they will just write it off like Hamcon has written it off. You get that now. So the Central Bank of Nigeria book will clear that Heritage Bank doesn't have 590 billion naira debt anymore. So once it is clear, the bank becomes the property of whoever is buying it. And they can now use it for all the money laundering, everything they want to use it for. But they couldn't save the Heritage Bank this way. There are some banks right now that are also in financial trouble, okay? So instead of opening it up in a way that they make everybody who might want to kind of buy their debts normally, not for any other sinister stuff, right? They are keeping all of that behind now. You are just going to wake up one morning, they will say breaking news. Those of you who have money in those banks, your money is gone. But before the money is gone, they will call all their friends, like this Heritage Bank now. Before you get the announcement that Heritage Bank is gone, They've called all their friends who have money in Heritage Bank to go take all their money out. The Heritage Bank is about to go down. Now, people like you, we have a 10 million, 5 million, 2 million, 1 million, 100,000, 500,000, 100, you know, like that in your banks. You will be the one who will now be asking them, when are they going to pay us our money? You can't withdraw your money. And all of that is now going to be the property of the NDIC. The NDIC is now going to liquidate the entire bank with the money inside. And you will never get your money, ever. Ask those who have become victims of banks that liquidated. Or you see those ones whose banks were taken over, they were lucky. Because that one just simply means they keep the customers. They ensure that uh, the deposit uh, fund in their banks, right, is still kind of guaranteed by the central bank that they are not going to take uh, their loan from it. They are not going to take their debt from it. It's their money. That's all they need. And the rest of you in their bank, you can pretend that nothing happened. But once your bank is announced that it's going down, everything inside it goes into the pocket of uh, the politicians and they are appointed uh, the Zoluto Abikila Makwe, person that will help you liquidate everything. So Andy Uba, a politician from, um, you know, a politician was part of those who took uh, tens of billions of uh, Naira as loan from Heritage Bank. And now, this loan they took was your money, depositors' money. They are now telling the depositors to wait till they sell the properties of the bank before they can receive their money or withdraw their money from their banks. Where is your government? Because they are the ones behind it. Government was supposed to first come out and say, all of you who have money in the Heritage Bank, you will receive your money if you can provide a transfer or an alternative bank account you want your money sent to. 
right there before, or even as they are making an announcement that their bank is going down. But it is Nigeria. Banking is fraud. It is put together by the elites. Okay? And that is why the economic problem you are facing in Nigeria today, you can see all of them. They are all in bed. When the politicians make policies of uh, looting Nigeria, the bankers ensure that the money that will be laundered from it is as smooth and clean, as legit as it can be, while the rest of you will have to continue to pay for that. So they asked him, uh, Obi, they said, Soludo, Soludo's two years was, is better than your own eight years. His answer. Soludo has achieved more than your eight years in office. In other words, two years of Saludo is better than eight years, Obi. What's your response? Well, uh, again, Charles, I don't like talking about issues like this. But it, because you mentioned it, let me tell you, Charles, let people go and look at my electoral promises to the people of Anambra State. Education, health, pulling people out of poverty, making sure there's access to rural areas. And I can tell you, they were the measures of MDG, and I was number one. I was number one in education. I was there in health. I was there in pulling people. Go to, go and ask those who ran Office of Poverty Alleviation, like Professor Mac, Dr. Mackel, Mackel and everything, Go and ask Sam Sudin. Go and... I was number one. What I promised, I deliver. I have to be fair. What I, I the... saw that the evidence of that online. Thank you. In terms of those mill, I think the European Union and all the rest. Everybody. Of them, their so rating I guess that I... was that and above all, was number one. Finished it and was able to even left a savings, subnational savings, for the first time in Nigeria, for future generations. Nobody had ever done that. What I promised, I delivered. My brother, my senior brother, Soludo, promised Dubai, Taiwan. So, until I promise that, because you must stick to what you promise. When Anambra is now Dubai, Taiwan, he has achieved his purpose. I didn't promise that. What I promised, I delivered. And that's what I'm thinking about, what I'm talking, when I was talking about being president, I wasn't, I was saying things that is deliverable, that I'm going to do this in the north, we're going to make sure we go to the north and turn around the uncultivated land, do this. I wasn't, I had what I wanted to do and I would. I am not promising what I know I can't do. I delivered what I promised. Go and verify. And indeed, it is verifiable. It was number one during this time in education, delivering the Millennium Development Goals on education. It was number one all over Nigeria. But you see, politics are now making it like, wait, wait you know, build school, you know, build this or that. That's the way he told them. You remember this? Soludo. How many of these has he done now, by the way? Just on the side. It's a batch from Omunze. Okwa from Isofia. Anambra rice with Osaku. Ikwenu from Obu. Ikwa from Awandoba. And malt and bottled water from Onesha. How many of those? Stolu Domba has done now. That should be the question people say. All right. And uh, well, that is where we are going to leave it. So that is uh, the first part of uh, this chat. And it seemed that we have uh, spent for, I mean, longer than uh, usual. So he said something about uh, Shoyinka and the rest as well. When they asked him about Shoyinka, he was like, mm, Shoyinka is an elderly person. I wouldn't want to like uh, reply him or be engaging on the uh, on the TV with him. But there's something though. He said, he said there's something though. I would love to put myself in a respectable position when I grow old to the age of Shoyinka. I would love to put myself in a respectable position where young people 
would actually really respect me. And that's all he said. So the confessor Shoyuka, the man that has been trying to gaslight the young people for asking for a good governance or a better country, eh, has lost uh, all his respect with the majority of sensible people, not the ass kickers. You see those ones who call Nigeria shit old, under Bokuari, all those who don't bruku, ronuku, ronu nazis. If no Africans, especially those ones who live abroad, who are now patriotic Nigerians from abroad, they actually call Nigeria shit old because the man in charge was uh, Bokuari. Now, the demented uh, money coin, another demented money coin with a shit for body. If Numbu, druggy. Now, they are now patriotic Nigerians abroad. Eh, Nikure, one by one. We see you. Along there, see you too. Because we know some of you who are suddenly eh, became a patriotic Nigerian in order to further help entrench this madness in that contraption. Now you love Nigeria. Anybody who is now talking is like somebody who do, that doesn't love Nigeria. And you could one by one. Shami, I be very well. Eh? You have a baku is watching me. You best show the bruku one by one. Eh? Mo she pe fun e wo lorun oju to ye ko sha mi. Eyin lori bruku you live abroad. We all agree that Nigeria was a shit hole. We don't know that uh, you guys are Ronu Nazis, the Ronukus. Now you want us say uh, you probably are jumping from one place to another to tell us now how Nigeria is going to be a great place under the druggy. Some of you are even offended that they are calling Tefnubu drug dealer. Are you she mad ni? Eh? Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Let's take calls. There's no time for us to read uh, the book without skipping the phone call part. So I have, uh, let me see, I've got uh, 20 and now. Uh, so I've got just about uh, 70 minutes. We can use that to take some calls, okay? So thank you so much uh, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I will take a quick break. And when I come back, yeah, you can call in and possibly come and express yourself too. Yeah, even you, the Abobaku. Yeah, Lofo. Pick up the phone, Ashiri. Don't, don't type. Stop typing. Pick up the phone and call in. Yeah. A majority of you are... See, when you see some of these, uh, including these uh, low lives, Abrodian Nigerians, Abrodian bad idiots, Abrodian bad stats. Abrodian, Agbadorian, and Yolori Buku Dede. Pick up the phone and call me. You are mostly like crickets, no lives. Mm -hmm. You have those who look at you from Nigeria, and some of you, it's like that dream of, ah, I can't wait to go abroad, and everybody will be looking at me and respect me. Now, they, they are destroying Nigeria. We are asking the old contraption to be broken up. Now you are calling people unpatriotic. You suddenly became patriotic. You are calling people Mali because of a drug dealer. Who no know him, Papa? Who no know him, Mama? <laughs> Pick up the phone and call me. Don't be because you are just like a cricket. You are there. You have everything. You have all to say. You have all the slaves back in Nigeria who are living in that darkness, looking at you and possibly hoping they have a you know a miserable life that you have abroad too. And therefore, you're everywhere. Let's give them time. Nigeria Shimadun. There's one way they call Nigeria Shimadun or something like that. Pick up the phone and call me. I'll give you the answer. Or any question you have, don't type. Stay away from that uh, comment. Pick up the phone and call me. I'll be back. In a minute or two. Uh, don't go anywhere yet, though. <laughs>